welcome back to my channel. Um, I recently did a Q&A thing on Instagram and wanted you guys to ask me a few questions. So here I am about to answer the questions. Right, so in 10 years, I'm going to be 45 years old. So um, I'm hoping to have a separate business which I've been planning and thinking and doing for the last three years, but probably will take another few years for it to be ready. Um, so hopefully that would be like a major income so that I actually won't really be doing makeup anymore, like bridal makeup uh, as such. Like I'll probably still want to teach. So I'll probably be teaching makeup and stuff and probably do the odd makeup here and there, but I'll probably won't be doing bridal. Definitely not in 10 years for sure um, and hopefully in the next four years I'll adopt a son and then um, yeah like probably not probably very likely move back to the UK in about four or five years and then um, have two dogs as well and retire early oh my god me and my friend talk about this all the time because we're similar ages and we always think to ourselves what would we do differently if we were 18 years old? And I'm telling you, the most important thing is um, to really open up and talk to people around you, whether it's your family, whether it's your close friends, whether it's anybody else that you think has achieved something in life or, you know, um, you feel like you can really listen to and stuff. I think it's really, really important to absorb as much knowledge as you can from people around you and take it on board. And don't just listen to one source of advice. I mean, I was just about to say, listen to your parents, of course. Like, But then, see, my parents were amazing, always. And they've always, always were there for me and have always, um, you know, given us good advice and stuff and good as suggestions. And I think... Um, Unfortunately, not everybody is lucky with very understanding parents. Of course, they love you and, you know, they want the best for you. But sometimes I don't think even they know how to um, explain that to you. So I think it's sometimes, yeah, if I, if I could go back in time, I would probably say have a conversation with your parents. Treat them like friends. Like, tell them. Open up to them. Open up to them about the things that bother you, that really affect you, and, you know, and change things so that you have a better relationship. And then also with the people around you. And one thing I do tell all of my cousins, okay, so this is not directed at you guys, but I do tell my cousins, I'm just like, don't have a boyfriend until you've finished university, okay? Like, and I really strongly still think that's the best advice my parents tried to give me but um I just thought they just you know they're just humble parents but I'm telling you yeah that's what I would say and and live your life like try and travel if you can try and travel if you're able to if you have the finances if you have the support um you should travel that's one thing I lacked on and I feel like traveling really helps you understand the world, what goes on around you. Um, you learn to really empathize and respect other cultures and traditions. And I, I feel like you grow as a person and you mature a lot more as well being, you know, outside of your comfort zone. So um, that's what I would say to myself. Personally, okay, so I'm just saying this from personal experience um, that keep it private, you know, stay in that bubble. Um, and when I say keep it private, I'm not just saying social media, as you guys know, I keep my um, relationship off social media, but, um, or my marriage, um, but I'm just talking about even when it comes to family or friends, if you guys have a problem, if you guys have had a fight, sort it out between the two of you. Do not tell other people. It, it really is completely pointless. Um, the worst thing you could do is if you're upset with your husband or your partner and then you go and you know talk about it to your friends or your family, they are gonna have a different image of your husband or your boyfriend or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And what's gonna happen is when you do make up, they're gonna have a bad impression of him and then you can't change that. So it's almost just like whatever problems you have, sort it out between the two of you, unless of course it's a really big problem and you know, I'm talking about like domestic violence or abuse or whatever, then yes, you need to speak up and you need to tell your friends and family. But if it's like silly things, of course, keep it between the two of you and sort it out. And I also think when you don't involve other people, you can make decisions yourself as 
husband and wife or as boyfriend and girlfriend. I think, um, I don't think other people need to tell you how to live your life. It's, it's, it's your life and that of your partner. So if you both want to do something, you should really, really fight for it and do it and not have anybody get involved because, you know, as rude as it sounds, some of these parents or older people, they're not going to be around for that long. Whereas you're going to be around for the next, you know, however many years, so you need to deal with it. So I think it's really, really important that you, um, you know, keep it, just stay in your bubble, man. Stay in your bubble. It works. It definitely works for me. No, I don't think I do. Maybe, maybe with some friendships or maybe with some work decisions and stuff like that, like small things. But overall, I'm, I feel like, you know what, God prepared me to go through the things that I went through to get me ready for other things. And, um, you know, I, yeah, I would go through all of that again, if that means I'm going to be where I am today and I'm going to be married to the man that I, you know, who, who I've married. Um, yeah, I, anyway. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, I don't. Um, and I don't think, and if, if any of you are watching this and you do have a lot of regrets, even if it's one big regret and it's just like, you know, pulling on you, I think it's really, really important to let that go because you can't change the past and you can't time travel. And I always think to myself, um, even if you were able to time travel, it's a rippling effect. You do, you changing one little small aspect might stop you from having something else that was great in your life. So I feel like you should just leave things the way they are because I feel like God intended for that to happen. Um, and embrace it and learn from it and, you know, and just move on. And so, yeah. So no regrets. Okay, so I'm a foodie. I love food and I love traveling. So I, when I travel, I like to try every single local delicacy um, and stuff like that. So it's really, really hard for me to do a diet. And I don't believe in diets because I feel, yes, if you, if you want a short-term goal, of course, diets are great. But, um, you know, uh, long-term, it's not something that you can sustain or maintain. So I, that's why I, I'm not a big fan of diets. However, I think it is really important to see a nutritionist. Um, well, first of all, I think it would be great if you could get full body checkup and get like full blood works, the whole shebang done. It's worth the money, okay? So like if you get it done, then at least you know what health issues you have and things that you can avoid. And from that, you then take those results and you go and see a nutritionist. And then you see what things you can change in your diet that sort of helps you to have a better life and a healthier life um, and a healthier gut, you know. So every, for everyone, it's different. So I could sit here and say, hey, don't eat this, don't eat that, and you should eat this and you should eat that. You can lose a ton of weight. But then, you know, you could be diabetic. You could be... You could have heart problems, you could you could have so many other health issues. So if I'm telling you to eat a certain way, that could really, really have some serious implications on you. So I don't want to do that. I'm not a professional, I'm not a nutrition nutritionist. So I think it's really, really important that you don't really follow what other influencers are doing or YouTubers. Um, I think it's important that you just go and see what works for you and something that you can do in the long run. Even if it takes you 10 years to get to your goal or ideal weight, you're, you're going to be so much happier that way and have a happy life, a balanced life, than doing these crazy yo-yo diets. I mean, it doesn't work for me, so yeah. I can't imagine what yo-yo diets would do to you, your body and your hormones. Why go through all of that, huh? Right, so I have nine tattoos and um, my first ever tattoo I got done with my best friend from Germany so we've known each other since we were six years old and when both of us turned 18 um, no sorry not even 18 when both of us turned 21 we decided to go and get a little butterfly done and we wanted to get it done somewhere where our parents will never find out and they did it to be honest I think since my mum watches my YouTube videos she's gonna find out today where I have all my tattoos. But anyway, so I had the tattoo, I mean, the, the butterfly done. So it's like a little butterfly because we thought, you know, caterpillars, they, they blossom into butterflies and we thought of it as our friendship. It blossoms into something beautiful. Um, and yeah, we, we still remained best friends. We're still super close. And yeah, it's been like, what, uh, almost 
Man, this year marks our 30 years. 30 years of friendship. I need to celebrate with her actually, speak of it. But anyway, and then uh, one, one, you know, earlier I talked about regrets. Okay, this one tattoo I do regret. I used to um, be a huge fan of EVE, this rapper, this female rapper back in the days. And she had these, um, uh, like these paws, tiger paws up her chest. And I really liked it. So I wanted to get it done on my body. And I did it and I'm just like, why? Why did I do that? But yeah, but you can't see it. Nobody's ever seen it. So it's like, whatever. And uh, the other thing I have is my third one was actually the lamp of the body. It's actually a Bible scripture. This is the first scripture that I read in the Bible before I converted. So this was literally the first ever thing that I read. And it, it was like an eye opener for me. It was such a beautiful, beautiful verse. And um, it was about positivity, the lamp of the body, meaning your eyes are the lamp of your body. So if your eyes are positive, um, you know, you attract positivity. So don't bring darkness into your life, which I think was such an important thing for me to read at the time because I was suffering from depression and I was really feeling really down and really low. And that um, scripture really, really, um, really, I don't know, it really changed something. Something changed when I read it. And it was so beautiful and yeah, so I want I wanted it here and I really wanted it to be very visible and I wanted to proudly walk around with it so that whenever somebody asked me about it, I was able to recite the entire scripture. Um, and, you know, 90% of the time people were very impressed. They were like, oh, wow, like um, this is what it's, what's written in the Bible. And I'm like, yeah. But yeah, anyway, so that was that. Then I got my God tattoo on my thumb. So this is my makeup hand and I wanted the God because I wanted every time I do makeup or every time I do something with these hands um, that are God given, um, I wanted to remember him and I wanted to always be grateful uh, you know that I, that I am where I am today and I have this um, talent, the skill, everything that he's given me. So it's, it's just something to always remember him by sort of thing. So yeah, that was that. And then I've got, I've got a plus and minus here, which basically I'm, I'm saying them they're not even in order, whatever I'm telling you right now, but yeah. So the plus and minus was meant to be, um, positives and negatives in life that, you know, it's cool. You will always have positives and negatives in life. And I thought it's such a cool tattoo to have right there. But then if you guys know Vidyu Raman, I went ice cream. Um, I went to eat ice cream with her in London and this is what she did while I was chatting. She was pressing the, the, the minus, okay, this. And when she was pressing it, I looked at her and I was like, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm putting your volume down because you're talking too much. So she kind of spoiled it for me because I was like, I have a body now. I'm going to look at it as a volume button and not positive or negative, but yeah. And then I've got my heart on my ring finger to represent love. And, you know, I think that's quite, you know, self-explanatory. And then I've got these hearts. Okay, so I got this done a while ago. And this is going to be a bit of a funny story, actually. So the big heart is for God. So my heart foremost goes to God. The second heart is for my dad. Okay, so my dad is like up there, man. He's like, ah. but yeah, so my dad. And then, I mean, my mum gets in there as well, but my dad, but yeah, anyway. And the third one was meant to be for the love of my life. So anybody that I get married and settle down with, that's the third heart. Okay, so that's, that's the order. And then my ex-husband convinced me to do his initials there and then to do a cross. And the fool did the same tattoo on himself. I don't think he was able to cover it up, but I did. I did a reverse heart out of that initial and the reason I did the reverse heart is to show that this was a failed failed heart <laughs> okay so so that I don't forget it you know stuff happened right and Christianity so I had like the cross there and I felt that you know what I don't need to go around and boast about it it's not something that I need to do and Christianity for me or my relationship with God is in my heart and so I wanted that to be covered with a heart so that it's something that's personal to me rather than walking around and being like, because the other problem is as well, if you have a cross and you're holding your arm this way, it's going to look like a reversed, you know, an upside down cross. And 
you guys know the meaning of an upside down cross and I didn't really want to attract that into my life so I thought you know what cool this is I'm fine with this and then the day that I got my divorce okay so this is I, I can't lift my legs but I have two um uh, wings on on my ankle and I've wanted it for a long time and I um got them done the day I got my divorce papers through um I mean first I cried and then I was like that's it let's go I'm gonna get these wings done to represent freedom to represent you know yeah that's probably escape I guess and then the last tattoo that I got done guys is this okay so this is literally when I just met my husband because it's two birds and that was me okay lonely for two years after my divorce sitting there you know thinking that's it my life is just like this I'm not gonna meet anybody and then my husband found me and was flying towards me so yeah that was the last tattoo that I got done and yeah my, my husband loves that tattoo of course it means a lot to him to the point where he almost got it done as well but then he didn't but um yeah that's it and that tattoo was done two years ago now um so yeah so there are no other plans of any other tattoos um but I do love tattoos and I think it's cool if you're a tattoo person. <laughs> that was my sister, by the way, who wrote that. My sister, okay, why is my sister amazing? She's amazing because if I think about all the hardest times that I've had in my life, and this is, and I'm talking about from childhood, every single difficult time that I've had, or the worst times of my life, my sister's always been there for me. And me and my sister, we're not the type of people um, who are on the phone all the time, we don't message each other, we, you know, we're not the type of people to hang out all the time as well, because we're very different from each other, we're, we're like the opposites, me, me and my sister are nothing alike, yet when it comes down to anything major, we know we're there for each other, and we know we can rely on each other and stuff, and, and I think my sister is the most caring the most sensitive and the sweetest person I actually know and she's so beautiful and her smile is like honestly she can melt hearts with that and she's also the funniest person I know like I can laugh like cry and laugh and my tummy would ache um, when she makes a joke and stuff so I yeah I, I don't say to her much or I don't really we don't we're not like that we're not all like lovey-dovey but well, I definitely am not, but um, but yeah, I, I know she she knows that I love her, and yeah, she's she is amazing. She's 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 really been there for me through tough times, and um, yeah. This year, April marks three years of being married. So my husband and I we got married in New York in 2017, April. And we never really planned to do a, a, a religious wedding. It was never something that was, you know, I, I mean, I'm a Christian and he doesn't really practice Hinduism either. So we kind of just thought it would be nice for the families and it would be nice for, you know, all of our friends and family to come and for us to have like a thing out of it and, you know, just make it special for everyone. Ultimately, that's what weddings are about, right? Like, you know, having family and friends together and really celebrating it and having a moment that you can cherish. So we did the Hindu wedding the following year, but for us, our anniversary that we celebrate is April um, because of our legal wedding. And yeah, and yeah, so for us, it's that's what it is. Wenn ich ehrlich bin, ähm, es ist mega schön, klar, es ist ein tropisches Wetter, also ähm, es ist richtig schön warm, ähm, sonnig natürlich die ganze Zeit, also es, auch wenn es regnen sollte, regnet es vielleicht eine Stunde, Maximum am Tag und das Essen ist natürlich super, super lecker, weil wir haben Chinesen, wir haben halt Malays und wir haben halt Tamil ne? und ähm, deswegen ist das wie so ein Fusion Menu, wo das Essen einfach super, super lecker schmeckt. Ähm, und ja, was sonst? Die Menschen sind hier super lieb und ich denke, wenn man schönes Wetter hat die ganze Zeit oder wenn es die ganze Zeit sonnig ist, ist man eh in einer super guten Laune. Und man hat einfach gute Stimmung und ähm, ja, das mag ich. Ich sag und viel zu viel, sorry. It's like an alternative to um, 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 I know, I, I suck at that, but anyway. Ähm, ja, 
Aber wie gesagt, ich habe mich super gut eingelebt. Ähm, ich liebe es sehr hier und ja, ich finde Europa aber trotzdem schön. Ich bin ja auch schließlich in Deutschland aufgewachsen. Ab 14 Jahre in Deutschland gelebt, also klar. Ähm, Deutschland wird auch immer ein, ein, ein Zuhause sein, sagen wir mal so. Ich wollte gerade sagen, zweites Zuhause, aber ja, ein Zuhause, aber ja. I'm surprised somebody would ask me this. It's not like I'm the, the, the judge of all makeup artists and stuff. Like it's, um, you know, there are so many makeup artists out there who've done it a lot longer than me. Yes, they might not have the social media following because... You know, back then people weren't tech savvy. A lot of people aren't even now. And because I was a bit younger than some of the other, uh, the other makeup artists back then, they weren't really on Instagram, they weren't on Facebook, and they didn't think of it as something important. Um, I did it for fun. I joined face, um, Facebook and Instagram and obviously grew. And so that doesn't that doesn't mean that I'm better than you know, makeup artists who've been around longer. It's not, it doesn't mean that at all. It just means that I've marketed myself really well and I do a lot of other things. And, you know, because people don't just follow me for makeup, I believe. I, I feel like people follow me for a lot of other reasons in, you know, with my blogging and obviously YouTube and there's a lot of stuff that I do um, outside of just being a bridal makeup artist. Um, so, so asking the question, oh, what do you think of the makeup artist growth? you know, growing, I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. And I, I would like to think that I was one of the pioneers to uh, let people think that actually this is a cool job and actually this is a job that you can, you know, have as a career choice and not just being a doctor or an engineer or lawyer. You know, all of those professions are freaking amazing, of course, and you study and work very, very hard for them. Um, but I think it's very, very important, no matter what profession you're in, that you do love it and you're passionate about it. So I think it's absolutely great that there are so many makeup artists. I, my only advice would be, do not get obsessed with Instagram followers. You know, social media is great. It's a great platform. It can, it does have its, um, you know, negatives, but overall, I think, um, social media can be a great platform to really promote your work but then if you get so obsessed with growing your followers and having insta fame or social media fame and stuff you're almost um, neglecting your service like you know that shouldn't be a priority when you're a makeup artist it should be you improving your skills you having great you providing great service and you growing within the industry because clients really like you and they're going to go to another client and say wow you know Vidya was amazing and she did this and she did that she did more than what i expected so that's the thing you know under promise but always over deliver and i think those are the things that are important and i feel there are a lot of makeup artists who unfortunately get into this industry because they love the idea of a glam life and it's social media and they just want to have that social media fame. But ask yourself that question, guys. If Instagram wasn't around tomorrow, are you still going to have your business? If yes, great. If no, then I think you really need to think about what you're maybe doing wrong. Hmm. I'm surprised somebody would ask me that question because I bet you guys think I don't really sleep. But that's not true. I... Two things I need in life is sleep and food, okay? So I need my eight hours of sleep. And I think on average, I do probably sleep about seven hours maybe. Um, yeah, I, I aim for eight. I sometimes sleep eight, but usually it's seven. Um, even if I have a 2 a.m. job um, or something like that, I would go to bed to make sure that I, I get at least seven hours of sleep. And I try, I aim for eight, but you know, it takes a while for you to fall asleep, blah, blah, blah. But um, my best are when I get 10 hours. Oh my God. Um, a few days ago, I slept 12 hours. So I was like, hallelujah. Ah, oh, I take that as a compliment actually, because if you guys think that, you know, I could make it in the, in the Tamil movie industry, that's like great. I would like to say that when I, so I've been watching Tamil movies since I was a kid, you know, my parents have always played Tamil movies in the background. A lot of people grow up with Disney movies. I grew up with movies about Rajanikan and Meena, okay? So that was me. And um, so having grown up in it and having heard the things that you sometimes hear about the movie industry, you know, you always feel like 
you know, my parents would kill me if I was going to go into acting or something. Um, but it's not like that anymore. I think it's it's become a very well respected career as well. And you know, you see um, back when I don't know, maybe about I don't know, maybe twenty years ago, even like um, a lot of actresses would only be in a movie to just look good. And then, you know, once they hit like their late 20s, they get thrown out. And I'm talking about South Indian movies anyway. Um, and then, uh, you know, like now, I feel like, you know, you have amazing actresses like Nainthara or Jodhika, um, who, you know, a lot of others as well, who, um, you know, are older. Um, and have been in the industry for a really long time, but get amazing roles, and they 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 still get so respected, and they 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 are still in the industry, which is nice to see because it's almost like you know it's not like there's a season for it. It's almost like if you do your job well now, people respect you for it, and people keep you on. Um, and it's nice to see. It's nice to see that women are equally respected, and women in the in the South Indian movie industry get roles where they're the main heroines and it's nice to see that it's really really nice to see that so in that sense i think i look at town movies completely differently where you know yeah I, I i wouldn't mind i mean my husband's very very supportive of it he's like oh go act go act and whatever and i'm just like but um uh you know i just i don't know i think sometimes it's really really important that you have the right role i was offered a role two years ago and my husband and I did actually look at the contract and the script and everything and you know we negotiated the prices and you know it really got to that point um, it wasn't like a big you know it, it was quite a, a lower budget movie but it had a very very beautiful story and I uh, was going to play one of the you know um, bigger roles and they were going to give me 35 minutes of screen time which is huge um so we said yes to everything me and my husband didn't discuss it with anyone because i know my dad would have just like chopped me up into pieces but me and my husband were okay with it and stuff and then when we went through the script again we realized that there was a scene where i had to wear something that i wasn't comfortable with and you know I tried to negotiate that scene with them, but they they said it was a very important scene in the story. And yeah, so I had to unfortunately decline, but that's only because I personally wasn't comfortable with it. And for my husband, it was like, yeah, because the whole time I kept thinking, if my dad goes to the cinema and watches this movie and sees the scene, or my uncles, or I would die. <laughs> So I, I just thought to myself, no, I can't, it's it's not, it really isn't something I'm comfortable with and stuff. So I guess if anybody ever offered me a role, I mean, I'm not going to be able to play like a young heroine or something, but even if I came as like a mother or I'm some, I don't know, like a, a villain, um, you know, I, I would be cool with that. It's just, yeah, you need the right role and it needs to represent you and you need to for me, it's really, really important that the story has a message. Like, I like to watch movies that have good messages. Um, so I would like to be a part of that where you're really, really helping people. I don't know. I get influenced by movies. I watch movies and I'm just like, wow, I learned so much from this and stuff. And, I, it, you know, I would like to be part of a movie if that ever happens. But, yeah. But it would be amazing, amazing, a dream, really, if I could act with Vijay Sethavabhi. Oh my god, I love his movies. I love his movies. I love the messages he sends out. And I like the heroines and the roles that they play in his movies as well. Like, I feel like, um, you know, they're very realistic, they're very respectful. And so, yeah, so I would, even if I'm not a heroine, I could be a sister or something. I don't know. I don't know. But I would like to. But we'll see. You never know, right? You never know. You can never say never. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I've chatted so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. And thank you for the questions. They were actually really, really cool. Like, I had a lot more questions. But can you imagine? I would have been like, hey, really, really. So, like, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did like this, please give it a thumbs up. Share, subscribe, of course. And um, also leave me feedback. Like, maybe you have some other questions that you would like to ask. Or if you do have any feedback or comments about the things that I've said, please feel free. But... Do remember that these are just my opinions. My, it doesn't mean that my way is the right way. It's just those are things that I've experienced and that I think. So, um, and I could be wrong, and you might even think that I'm talking BS. But that's okay. We all have our own opinions.